Wonderful. Okay, it is one o'clock on the dot. Welcome, welcome back, guys. Um, this is our one o'clock class, and it's all about social media marketing. So again, I'm Keisha Chapman. I am the Division Operating Officer for the Urban League of Metropolitan St. Louis, St. Clair County Division. And your facilitator for this session is Miss Amy Thompson. Hello, hello. Thank you so much, Amy. And before we get started, Amy has some questions, and I'm going to throw those out. So I want you guys to take a moment to answer these questions, and this will give us an idea of who's joining us today and what we're working with. So we can take a moment. I'm excited. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> At what level is your company engaging in social media? And that fourth one should say, I'm supposed to be posting stuff. <laughs> like, I didn't know that was an option. <laughs> hey, good. We have some people responding. Very good. Yeah, the last one is, oh, I'm supposed to be posting? Right. <laughs> <laughs> What's that about? That's right. <laughs> posting what exactly? Is that a thing? <laughs> All right, we're going to give this just a few more seconds, and then we're going to end the poll and share the results. Uh-oh. All right. <laughs> share the results. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's pretty good. That's that's right on par, I think. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you guys for sharing. Um, and at this point, I'm turning it over to you, Amy. So take it away. I'm I am curious the 17% that are supposed to be posting stuff that pick that as their answer. <laughs> I know. <laughs> All right, we'll, we'll get y'all straightened out today. <laughs> well, thank you, Keisha and the Urban League for having me on today. And I'm going to go ahead and switch over and share my screen for the presentation today. And I hopefully have the right, right one here. There you go. Can you see the slide? Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. So I do want to introduce myself. I am the owner and online marketing goddess of High Biz Marketing. And the online marketing goddess came about from a class that I had taken. They asked me to come up with a moniker for myself. And I came up with OMG, online marketing goddess. And that has stuck ever since. <laughs> So we are located in Belleville, Illinois. Uh, we started our business officially in 2012. Uh, we started from our home in um, O'Fallon and then we quickly realized that we needed to move uh, to a business location and we are located actually inside of the Family Sportsplex in Belleville, uh, Illinois, if you're familiar with that area. I am the website designer for our business. I do the Google AdWords accounts for our clients. I manage those accounts. I am the social media account manager. Um, so I manage all those accounts for our clients as well. And then my fiance is my business partner and he manages the advertising and sales inside of the uh, Sportsplex that we offer as well. So a little background about me and uh, today, I kind of want to go over a few things. Um, we have a little bit of an agenda. Hopefully, it will take up our time and we'll have some time for questions and answers. Um, see, so the first thing I want to talk about on our agenda is check ins now and then. Now and then, meaning what we used to do prior to March and what we're doing now uh, because of COVID 19 how we can still incorporate those check-ins in uh, for your business. Uh, posting. Posting is always important, keeping up good communication with your customers 
and um, tips on what to post during this time, um, what to say, how to say it, especially during these, these, these difficult times. Um, so some of those things can really apply to any time. I will go over how you can have an event. Um, obviously, we can't have 100 people at your business anymore right now. Um, but how you can have an event and how, those, how we can set up those steps to advertise your event. Of course, the events that I'm talking about are going to be virtual, uh, just like this, and they will be on video. <laughs> And it can be nerve wracking to do a video. I will admit this is my first time doing a Zoom webinar and we're on the second slide and so far no disasters. So uh, <laughs> we haven't, you know, we're doing good so far. If I can do it, so can you. So those are the things that uh, we're going to be going over today. Um, one of the things I, I added this in because I want you to, it's, it's not just all about Facebook. I want to, um, what I am going to be covering today is mostly about Facebook. Um, it is still the number one channel for business advertising. Um, but of course, if your, your audience is on, uh, is younger, platforms such as like Snapchat might be better suited uh, for you to be on. But I want to add this slide in. Um, I've used this before. And I want you to really take ownership of these profiles and set up a business listing in all of these uh, directories and networks that you possibly can. Set it up, fill it out completely, your Google Plus profile, um, Instagram, Yelp, um, TripAdvisor, if that's something that might, um, you know, if you're in the travel industry, that might be good to use as TripAdvisor, LinkedIn, Facebook, of course, and Twitter. So just make sure you take ownership of those profiles and get all of your business information out there. That's going to help in any type of marketing that you do online, um, whether it's just directly social media or, um, or just online marketing in general. Can everybody hear me? Okay, good. <laughs> So traditionally, we know that there is a purchase, like a purchase funnel. And your buyer is going to have um, needs. When someone's looking to purchase a product or a service, they might have gone into the store to research the options that they have, um, or they might go online to research uh, what they, what's available. But They'll spend hours looking for and days possibly for that solution. They'll evaluate their different options and then they make that purchase, but they may not be 100% confident. Well, what if there's a way that you can get that confidence back? Confidence comes from what's called third party validation. Third party validation is ultimately a secret weapon in closing deals for your business. Nothing you say about yourself will have as much impact as what others are saying on your behalf. So reviews are essential to your business. And yes, you may not think that is direct, you know, is social media, but it's all part of online marketing and part of social media as well, because there is a place to leave reviews on Yelp and Facebook about your business. So getting that third party validation is, is critical and you wanna have that. More than 75% of consumers now say they ask their friends before making purchase decisions. That's a lot and I'm sure you've seen online how many people, you know, in your friend's timeline, how many people are asking for a recommendation, how many people are asking, you know, I've got, you know, something that needs to be fixed or repaired. A lot of times I'm in um, city groups, inside of city groups like um, City of O'Fallon or City of Belleville. Um, they all have different groups, Facebook groups that they, um, usually they post stuff about what's going on in the city. But a lot of people ask for a recommendation for a pet groomer or for a recommendation of a landscaper or a recommendation of a plumber. Um, that's the perfect opportunity to position yourself inside of those groups and you can be one of the first ones to respond with, um, hey, you know, I'd be happy to help you, um, 
you know, fix your heating and air conditioning unit. I'd be happy to uh, be able to groom your pet or, or, or whatever, whatever it is. I think someone, is there a chat? There is a chat. <laughs> okay, there it is. <laughs> yes. Hope, can you see it? <laughs> yeah, okay. If anybody had a question or anything yet, it, it, raise your hand, pause if I need to repeat anything or if you have any questions, please, please let me know. Um, otherwise, I am going to keep going. <laughs> so the new purchase funnel is people are asking online, posting it in their timeline. My garage door uh, broke. Do you have any recommendations? You can see the one at the bottom. Um, if you have any recommendation for a garage door repair service. There again, that's a perfect opportunity to be first in line to say yes, and I can come out today um, and, and be in line to, to make that uh, connection there online. So another thing to remember, like I said earlier, is filling out everything you can online in your Google business profile, in your Yelp profile, in LinkedIn, even on Facebook, in your about section, fill it out and check it often. A lot of times, and I've gotten this as a pop-up after I've checked into a business, is this business, are these hours still valid? Don't let consumers or the crowds out there fill in the blanks about your business. Make sure your business has all of the information um, listed correctly. And that's not just on Facebook, but that's everywhere. Even in um, on Google, on Google business uh, pages or Google business listings today, uh, with everything going on, uh, the recommendation was to change everybody's hours make sure that your business has the correct hours on your Google uh, listing to reflect whether your business is temporarily closed or if you have certain hours or special hours due to COVID-19. So that's really, really important. Let's see, can you repeat the city groups portion? Yes, of course what you can join groups specific to where you live and or where your business can reach. So if you live in St. Charles, check to see if there's a St. Charles city group that you join where you can watch for recommendations as well. Yes. Um, what I did is I just typed city of O'Fallon comma I L and they have a city of O'Fallon. There are a lot of um, like yard sale sites too, and those could be okay but typically the city ones, and it's just really, it's not run by the city, it's just run by random citizens. Um, the one in O'Fallon, occasionally, I think the mayor's son might jump in there with some information about city things going on, but really it is just the citizens in there. Um, so I hope that answered your question. So. And I think Keisha will open it up to questions and answers. If I did miss something, sorry. So just another reminder, fill in your about section. Um, that's so important to not let somebody else fill that in for you. Um, Check-ins, I put this, I, I found this kind of funny. Um, Check-ins, yeah, Batman doesn't want you to know where the bat cave is, but you definitely wanna get, um, clients checking into your business. It broadcasts it out to their entire audience. How would you like to have their audience seeing where they're at, seeing you know, how fantastic your restaurant is or how fantastic your service is or how fantastic your business is? And that um, customer of yours has just done that for you. So it's kind of like having little cheerleaders out there shouting out about your business. And um, of course they're uh, taking pictures and, and posting that. And we'll, we'll get into that too about dissecting a check-in and, and how the importance of it is. Take a deep breath. <laughs> so Foursquare was built on the idea of checking in 
and it offered coupons to anyone um, who did check in. So in a similar fashion, you can offer deals to your customers who check in on Facebook. And yes, this is one that's on their counter. And when we get open back up, we will be able to put these signs on our counters, on our doors, wherever we want someone to really see it. And the reason they're doing it on their counter, and I'll show you in just a second, is this next slide, is a cupcake shop did this right at checkout. They wanted to capture their, their customer right at the checkout to give them an additional offer. Now this one says save 15% on today's purchase if you check into the business on Facebook and show it to them. And that's right at the, at the count checkout counter. Another thing you could do is um, buy three cupcakes, get the fourth one free and have that on your check-in sign. If you check in right now, today, you'll get a fourth cupcake free, something like that. So um, yeah, those are on our counter, but we can do the similar thing. Uh, similarly, we can put a sign on our door if our business is closed right now. If you're a restaurant and you're doing curbside pickup, you can have it on the door. Um, a catering company, we, there is a catering company that's offering meal prep and catering. They can offer it at their door location as well. Or you could even staple a piece of paper on, um, on the, the bag that they pick up as well, if you check in. The check-in offer could also, it doesn't have to be something for today. It could be something for in the future as well. Um, because some businesses are closed right now, you can certainly offer uh, discounts for future purchases. Um, or discounts for, for example, if um, I know someone who does pet sitting and she can't do any pet sitting yet until that's opened up, um, but she could offer pet sitting for in the future and she can offer a discount if you book your pet sitting in August um, or if you book your pet sitting in you know, September, she can offer a discount now. Get that up front, uh, make, out, make the arrangements, and then of course, if, if, if things are still closed, then you can change those arrangements around. So the power of a check-in, let's kind of dissect this a little bit. Um, Lorette is eating sushi at Tai Tai House Bayside. So it's a personal referral, it's a word of mouth. It links to the Facebook page here and down here. She added a personal message and of course, you know, we always take pictures, especially of food. For some reason, we're, we, we love taking pictures of food, but we also take pictures of all sorts of other random stuff. It might be the new air conditioning unit that we just got installed, or it might be um, how the, the plumber that came into our home used shoe covers and cleaned up the sink, um, or it might be, you know, how the landscaping looks, whatever that was. We, we always take a picture of it. I don't know why. Um, so she's added a personal message. She's added a picture of her sushi. The recommendation comes down here. The reviews, the business information, and again, it links to the Facebook page is all listed right here. So her friends can link out to it and see what their menu is, go to the page and check it out from there. Um, it also shows all of her friends who like this business as well. And um, this is actually her sister commented um, on her check-in. So it's super powerful. When, you, when a customer checks in, it then shows that check-in to all of those, that customer's friend base, basically. Um, if you've done that before, you've seen it. You've probably had friends on there commenting Oh, I didn't know you were at, at that restaurant or I didn't know you were there. Um, I really like this or I really like that. So any questions so far? <laughs> okay, I'll keep going. So how to make a difference with a Facebook check-in. 
Um, there are simple graphics that you can uh, put together. You can put it together in a Word document if you have Paint or if you have uh, Mac. There's so many different programs you can um, you can create a, a, a sign on your on your door. Um, this was just one graphic showing the consumer how you know how to open the Facebook app, check in, tap check in, select your business from the list and tap post. Um, you don't always have to have an offer at the time. I've actually seen some businesses, um, if they check in, that business will donate a dollar to, um, to a charity that they're supporting. So if you don't have something that fits into a buy one, get one free, or if you don't have you know, a cupcake shop where you can give a fourth cupcake away, or if it's something that just doesn't fit a, a product that you can add on or, or a discount, maybe you want to donate to a charity and by them checking in, they can, the business then donates to a charity. Um, you can also, there again, offer future discounts, um, especially if you're not open. Um, and if you have an event, oops, if you have an event, of course, we're going to talk about that in just a second. Encourage people that are attending the event to check in. And that's another great opportunity at your event, um, whether it's virtual or in person, to, to offer specials if they check in at your event as well. So, so what should you post and how often? Um, posting is a great way to keep your customers informed, um, especially nowadays there with so many changes. If you have adjusted hours, if you're constantly having to um, sanitize your workspace, if you are an essential business right now and you have to sanitize your workspace, sharing that information with your customers so they know that they feel safe is is key, especially right now. Did it matter before? Yeah, well, yeah, maybe. Um, just really reaching out to them and letting them know that A, you're open. These might be your hours that you're open. We are doing everything to keep you safe. Um, and then just providing any information that you, you possibly can. Um, a good time now is to prepare a list of responses for questions that your customers are going to have because the travel industry, for example, got hit really hard and they were getting hammered with questions. Well, can I get my money back? Can I get a refund? Can I reschedule? You know, if someone bought something from you and now your business is closed, what are they going to think? Are they going to think, are they going to get their money back? Are they actually going to get that service or product? Um, when the business opens back up, reassure your customers. Um, gyms, the gym that I belong to, well, every gym is closed, but what they are doing is they're extending their membership on to the end of it. So I have a feeling that's probably what a lot of gyms have done, um, just so that they can keep goodwill. Um, you've probably seen insurance companies coming uh, across since nobody's really driving that much. The auto claims are down and insurance companies are giving refunds as well. You don't, I'm not saying that you have to refund things, but reach out to your customer and let them know that, hey, we can do something different. We can, um, it, it, you know, if you want to refund them, refund them, or we can use this in the future or do something different. But just making sure that you, you, you do post that and post it frequently. Go the extra mile and deliver that helpful content. So uh, she had a customer ask on here about, um, about how to remove an admin from a Facebook business page. And the owner, uh, Jennifer, gave a link and, and information on exactly how to do that. So when she woke up, so when she woke up, uh, she had the answer and, and uh, she was really happy about having that, uh, having that so quickly.
So keeping up uh, customer relationships, customers are going to want to contact you directly on Facebook. Um, if your normal hours have changed or if your business is closed, there are some ways that you can actually set up automated messages. Um, you've probably seen on uh, when you come to a business page, the Facebook Messenger opens up and you can have automated responses set up inside of um, inside of Facebook and actually go out to that. How are we doing on time, Keisha? I haven't even checked. Oh, we're good. <laughs> so setting up automated responses, you can do this directly inside of your um, inside of your business page. And some of the responses you can set up, like an away message, respond to all of your oncoming messages that you're not available. This is sent out instantly. So it says, thanks for your message. We're away and can't respond right now. We appreciate you reaching out. Or an instant reply. Thanks for contacting us. We've received your message and appreciate you reaching out. Those are sent instantly. Um, contact information requests. Respond to messages that request contact information. Uh, location requested and page recommended. Page recommended is actually sent 10 minutes after someone publicly shares that, they recommend your page. So that's an interesting, interesting thing to have as a message. A location requested, thanks for your message. We're located at 123 Main Street. So these are all different settings that you can set up inside of your business, um, messages, your Facebook messages for your business page. Okay. Um, so here's some automated responses. We're ready to take your order. Call us or message us here if you are taking orders now. Um, thanks for your message. Our retail store is closed, but we can still take orders online. Send us a message or check out our website. Um, just recently, I went to buy some flowers and vegetables, uh, plants, and um, I wasn't sure what the plants looked like, and I wasn't really sure what the price was either. So the place that I bought them from actually put together a really great post. It had probably 40 images. <laughs> the green peppers, the yellow peppers, the tomato plants. Each one, each plant had their own post with what type of plant they were and the price and the size and everything. So that was actually really great. Called them up, put in my order, went and picked it up curbside. So just little things like that, um, letting your customers know if you're switching to a curbside or an online type of pickup, Put those on your Facebook page. Put the images, the pricing, people want to know that. Um, I want to know because if the pepper plant was $3, I might have only bought one versus if they were $1.50, then I was going to buy two or three. So letting your customers kind of know those different things because they're, they're having to navigate it blindly now. Um, is, is great to keep them, keep them in the loop and, and see what's going on in your business. Uh, a couple other automated messages. Thank you for your message. We've made a move to online appointments while our office is closed. Please email us or leave a message to make a virtual appointment. Or we are not currently taking new orders, but if you have questions on an existing order, feel free to send us a message here. So those are just some simple messages that you can set up ahead of time and then of course you'll want to monitor that so um you actually answer them back <laughs> and don't leave them don't leave them hanging <laughs> all right events okay we used to do events in person now we are doing them online but that's okay you still have to dress up for it though <laughs> you still have to put pants on <laughs> So take your events online. Um, take a look at what your business can shift online. 
Um, more people are spending time on their devices. They're at home now. Um, so they have, they usually have their phone in their hands. Mobile has always been um, grown in the, um, in the usage basically for, for websites and search and everything. Mobile has always been a great, um, has been growing. So events are a great way to leverage others to help spread the word um, out, out about your event. So in this event, <laughs> um, oh, I'm trying to look at the picture. Okay, this was a friend of mine, Mindy. Um, Mindy shared this event and she said she can't wait for this. Uh, Santa really came through this year. I guess she got it as a Christmas gift. <laughs> so when someone clicks that they're attending or that they're interested in an event and she marked that she's interested, it shows up like a huge billboard in their news, in their news feed to their friends. So Mindy's a friend of mine. I saw that she's going to this, this evening with the Eagles. Um, it's a great, great way to get that, get your event broadcast out there. When people click on that and they share it and, and uh, mark that they're interested, it just skyrockets your event exposure. So Facebook Live is an easy way to broadcast a video in real time. Um, of course, you can do a YouTube video and broadcast that. Um, you can put it on your YouTube channel. You can put it on um, your website, your emails, so on and so forth. But Facebook Live is super easy. It's fast. It's easy. You can create an event. Um, for your Facebook Live ahead of time, and we'll talk about that in just a second on the best ways to create that event. Um, and it's a chance for you to create these moments with your audience and interact with them. Because during a Facebook Live, your audience can hit the little hearts and the likes, and they can comment as you're talking through that, um, through that live video. Facebook Live is free. So, um, there's no, no excuses. You don't need a fancy camera. You don't need a fancy crew. You can use your cell phone. And I don't think I know anybody that doesn't have a cell phone nowadays. So it's super easy. Um, just pick up your, your cell phone. Um, or if you have a laptop, you can do it straight on your, your laptop. Um, some ways to do that. If you're a chef, do a demo on, on your favorite meal. Um, if you own a gallery, show off your art studio. Um, there's so many different ways. If, you, if you're stuck on something, let me know. Reach out to me and I'll, I'll help you with that. Videos, the importance of a video. Any given video stands out 50 times better and has a chance of appearing in the first page of results than text does. So yeah, you write a fancy blog post on your, on your website, but a video is going to rank better, better than that. Um, they've always had a better search rankings. Of course, once you create that video, like I said earlier, you can use it anywhere. You can use it on your website. If you create it on Facebook, you can actually download it and save it to your YouTube channel. And on your YouTube channel, you can share that onto your website. You can share it on other social media platforms. You can put it in emails to your customers. So those are some great ways to get that, that one video that you created out in so many other ways, in so many other avenues. So it's come time to pick a Facebook Live topic that's just right for your business. No matter what you choose, make sure to plan it in advance, in advance. 
and announce it with a post that tells your audience when they can catch you live. This is critical. Creating that event ahead of time gives the uh, consumer time to put it on their schedule. If you just put something out there 10 minutes before you're going to go live, you, you're, you're not gonna catch your audience because they're not always going to be on there. And they're not always going to be looking at your page. Um, they might be on Facebook and they might scroll through, but they might not catch it within that 10 minute time frame. So announce it days ahead of time. Not only announce it, but when you create that event, be specific in your description. A catchy, catchy description will get their attention and let people know um, what that event or what that video is going to be about. So some, and I'll, we'll take a look at, a, at, at an event and I'll, I'll dissect that in just a second. Some ideas to go live, you could host a Q&A. You could go live with someone in your audience and interview them. You could even go uh, live with, um, and, and you, it would do two screens. You wouldn't, they wouldn't have to physically be in, in the room with you. Um, I don't know how you can do the six feet apart now in a video, but uh, you can do two screens. And it could be even someone uh, in your industry. So let's say you're a, a flooring installer and you have a friend who's an interior designer. Partnering up with them um, would be a, a good live video. And Charlene says, use Zoom and go live on Facebook. Yep, you can do that too. There's so many tools now, nowadays. Um, showcase and explain your products or services. Perfect time. Uh, teach your audience how to do something. Oh my gosh, I was so upset when I saw Sips and Splatters close down in O'Fallon because I'm seeing all these other businesses like them do these DIY kits. You pick up the DIY kit curbside, you pay for it online, and then you take it home and they do a virtual painting with you. So if you're familiar with sips and splatters, you go in, you go in with your girlfriends or your guy friends, and you do this painting in their studio and you drink and you have a good time. Well, obviously they can't do that now. So what some other businesses have done are these DIY kits, so to speak. So you buy it, you pick it up, you take it home, and then they do their virtual video or their virtual event with you. You log in and they paint along and you paint along with them. And that's really, they've, they've learned, the other businesses have learned to pivot in this time frame and, and uh, be able to keep up. So it's sad to see Sips and Splatters closed. Um, but something like that, teach your audience how to do something that could be fun, uh, create kits. Uh, I think Eckert's did a uh, cookie decorating kit for Easter. I, I, in fact, I think a couple people did that. Um, there's another company doing a pizza kit. Uh, you buy the pizza. Now, how hard is it to really make a pizza at home? But they put together a kit and now it becomes fun, something fun to do with your family. And you will remember that business more. Um, or you can create a live series. Let's say you have several topics you want to go over uh, with your audience and create a live, a series of them. So this is an event and some of the things I want to go over on how we could leverage this event. Um, one of the things here is the description, visitor day, family. Okay, that's all right, but let's make it a catchy event, catchy title, um, something that really uh, would stand out more. Uh, it always gives the time, the date, um, who it's being put on by, the map, and then there's a place down here for discussion. This is a great place to put in here um, discussion whoop, topics for um, 
what you might be talking about. Remember, you're putting this event out at least a week before the event. So build it up, build up the hype about your event. Don't just put it out there once and assume people will see it. Build it up and post about it constantly. There's an event that comes along in December and I'm not gonna say what it is because it is local and it's nothing, nothing with you guys, Keisha. It's, not, <laughs> um, it's, it's a city event. Um, I'm so disappointed with them. All these different businesses um, do this event together and you go from business to business. And you would think that each business would post something inside the event and say, hey, come to our business from 11 to 12 and you'll get a 10% discount. Or, you're, or come to our business between one and two and we're giving free samples of brownies or whatever they're doing. I never saw it. <laughs> so building that hype over the week or weeks that you're before your event really is going to get your audience excited to not only be at the event, but then start sharing that event. Remember, sharing that event also is like a huge billboard and broadcasts out to their audience and their friends that they're attending that event. And it might be something their friends want to attend. So we want to really make that event, um, I keep flipping over, we really want to make that event uh, stand out. So it's your day to go live. Um, you're all ready, you've created your event, you've got everything set up. Once you hit live, make sure you wait a few minutes, um, give everybody a chance to log in, introduce yourself, explain what you'll be doing uh, during the live event. Um, then when you're ready, oh my gosh, respond to them as close as you can in real time, but respond to them by using their name. People love that. When you're on the live, it's kind of, kind of crazy. I've done them before, but people will be coming on and be like, oh, hi, Keisha, how are you? Oh, you know, thanks for joining us today. And, you know, I'm, I'm here to talk about some social media marketing and, oh, hi, Jamie, how are you? Think it, it, it does get a little weird where you're actually um, saying hi to everybody, but people want to be recognized. They want to be recognized on there and they'll show you love in return uh, by announcing their name or, or, or saying hi to them. So make sure you do that. Go live with Wi-Fi instead of cellular, da cellular data for a smoother video. Uh, that's just kind of what we've seen. Uh, for study your shots, if you have a tripod or prop your phone up against a wall or a book or something. Um, I've actually got my laptop up, up on a stand. Um, interact with your audience and respond to comments during your broadcast. That's super, super important, um, especially if they ask questions. Uh, to get more viewers, post about your event ahead of time. We talked about that. Create an event, uh, post on Facebook or a story with a countdown sticker on Instagram. And then when your live concludes, you can save it and you can post that video again in YouTube your website and emails and so forth. Um, so that's, so that's, um, that's important to save it. Sorry. <laughs> um, that's important to save it and, and use it um, in other places. So let's see, I thought there was a chat that came across our question. So that's pretty much what I have. So I'm at the end. If anybody has any questions, I think this was really, really good. Um, I do have, you know, a, a side business as well. And I think using the check-in, um, 
I really like that idea, even mm-hmm. virtually for those companies that you're doing, you know, work virtually during this pandemic, you know, find a way to use the check-in feature. You know, if somebody purchased something from you or then they check in because they can check in virtually, you know, like our church does it. Our church, of course, is is closed. Um, the building is closed. But on Sundays when we do virtual, we still encourage people to do a, a check-in so that people know that we're still having service, so to speak. But you can do the same thing with your business. So I think that is a really, really good idea and find something that will be a good giveaway. And I love, love, love the idea of making a contribution um, and sharing the things that you are doing with your company to make sure that your customers have a very safe environment. They have a safe place to go to during this pandemic and out of the pandemic. So I think that was really, really good advice. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Crystal is asking any suggestions for a small new business with very few followers i have promoted word of mouth and done vending events which gets pricey i definitely understand are there any other avenues to build followers and find potential customers i am in the kids party industry and i provide a service awesome the kids party industry yeah i actually have a client that um is in the industry of bounce houses. So that might be the same thing. Um, but yeah, that uh, industry is kind of at a stand, standstill right now. Um, but that's okay because it we're gonna open back up. We know that. Um, so offering discounts in the future, um, if they book in September or October, um, I don't know if you're in Missouri or in the city or the county, or if you're in Illinois, um, you, you'll have to watch and see, you know, when that industry can open up, um, to gauge what month you want to offer, you know, offer a discount for, um, but promoting, I promoted word of mouth and done vending events. Okay. Can you um, maybe, can you hit on hashtags maybe? Because I think um, if you, I've, I've heard of certifying hashtags um, and you can, um, I think there's like a cost for some, like a specific hashtag. And so that when you start promoting like on Instagram and on Facebook, you can kind of follow that or you may be known for that particular hashtag that maybe generate followers. And, um, and what about posting regularly um, so that people can always see that's another way and using those hashtags. I don't know if that's an option or if that's a good way to kind of help increase um, or organic followers, not the ones that just come and they, you know, they may follow you for a little bit and then they unfollow you to try to get a follow back type situation. But <laughs> I don't know. What do you think, Amy? Yeah, all of it. And um and I'll touch on what CT says as well um, in just a second. Um, all of those things. Of course, a hashtag, people have to then learn your hashtag and learn what it is to be able to search for it, but you can condition them. That takes some time, of course. Um, but what my customer actually did was they partnered with a restaurant um, to do some not only advertising, but be at the restaurant and handing out their business card and or a coupon and flyer about their um, about their bounce houses. So finding a complimentary service that where kids are going to be, okay? Um, we're inside the sportsplex. If there is a sportsplex near you, like um, there again, I don't know if 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 you're in this area. There's a Veta Sports, they're all over St. Louis. Um, partnering with them and um, possibly trying to get your information out to that audience is, is, a, is a way to get a broader audience mm-hmm. to your page as well. But what CT said is running advertisements, and I know you said that gets pricey, um, but Facebook advertising is very affordable now because of COVID they have reduced their, their, their fees. So that's an option as well. But then in the poll, uh, at the beginning of this, a lot of people did say they only posted weekly. So try to post more often. 
and post really engaging videos, or engaging photos and or videos, of course, mm -hmm. um, but photos of your parties, um, actual photos of them. I hope that helped. Melody asks, can you have a looping video? Can you have a looping video that could play on a social media page? You know, I think there are video services out there that do looping videos. Um, are you talking about a GIF or like an actual longer video? Because we use, um, so like on our Facebook cover on High Viz Marketing, we have a video that loops on the cover photo section. And we use a service called, um, I'm gonna say it's called Slide, Slidely, Slide, Slidely by Promo. Uh, they, offer, they offer a video service that loops and that can be placed on your cover photo section of your Facebook business page. Um, that I'm familiar with that company. I guess like a slideshow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's that company is the only one I know that can do a uh, that I'm familiar with that can do a looping video. I'm sure there are others. Yeah. Awesome. So definitely check them out slightly by promo. That's good. Charlene said, I'm starting to add my website address to Facebook posts because people don't look at info about. Yeah, they don't. Mm -hmm. They're lazy. Sorry. We're all lazy. <laughs> Make it easy for them. Make it easy. Yeah. Put your link in there. Put your phone number. You know, make it easy for them. I think that's very key. I'm a part of this group on Facebook, and it may be some people in this um, um, class that may be familiar with the, the uh, Billion, Billion Airness Girls Club. It's a um, so like a women empowerment entrepreneurship type club just to promote women in entrepreneurship, those who are thinking about it or you're inspired to be one. But someone made a post there like right when it was really exploding and I thought it was excellent. They said, you know, when you make a post, you know, you know, to say the things that you say, please include your social media handles and your website because it will make it easy for people don't have to search all over to find out what you're talking about. They can just go right there in your post and click on whatever they need. And I thought that was very, very good. And it's, and I find it helpful when people actually follow those rules in that particular group, because if I'm interested in what they're saying and if I'm interested in what they're selling and promoting, I can just go right there. I don't have to click on their page and find find the link and then find where they work and, and is what they're working, the same company that they're running. It's, it's, a, it's a lot. So I think, Charlene, that's a very good way because you are always self-promoting. You're always self-promoting. And um, I want to share this too. I think it's important that a lot of times when people are buying into your business, of course, the service and the product is good, but a lot of times people are going to buy into you before exactly. the business. Exactly. I know I'm a, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a stickler to customer service and your, your prices may be high, but I will buy into you because you're, sir, you're showing me you have been, you know, what you've been presenting you as yourself is like, I think I want to be connected with that. So I will be willing to pay the little bit extra because I am buying into you. What am I saying here? you too have to be marketable. The things that you say, you are a walking, talking billboard for yourself and for your business. I went to a pitching competition um, a little while ago for my own personal business and they talked about that. They said, you know what? The, you know, we're willing to give you a chance because we like your energy and how you came in here. Anybody yeah. watch Shark Tank before? People yeah. give them an opportunity because the sharks pay attention to the disposition <laughs> and the energy of the people and how you're presenting you exactly. yourself. So mm -hmm. you want to be mindful of that even on social media. I've unfollowed people who had a great business, but what they share on social media that's not connected it's like they didn't differentiate so it was kind of offensive on this side but the business was good i was like i don't know about that i'm following that's too much and <laughs> 
So just be mindful of that while you are marketing your business, that people are also looking at you. You are your first representation of your company. And what you put out there in digital world is what people receive, no matter how you put it out there. I do have to, I do have to touch on that. I had a customer, this was years ago, that um, she had a business and she actually closed her business um, and it had been a year or two before closing a business and she was talking personally on her personal page about a topic that um, is touchy. It's a vaccine versus anti-vaccine. And she, uh, she had a lot of people that were not even customers slam her business that's been closed and leave bad reviews about her business just because her personal views. So yeah, it was pretty crazy. And the damage control, we had to pick up on that. You can schedule Facebook posts on your business page, take a weekend and set up a bunch of dates and times. Yes, you can, Charlene. Yes, you can. And there are so many. And like I said, we I really covered Facebook. These same principles can apply to um, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter. You can use the same post and image across the board. You sh an advanced, I'm going to say you should, you can, but I'm also going to say you shouldn't because you might have a different audience in Instagram that you have in Twitter and you might have a different audience in Facebook. Mm -hmm. So if that same person's or persons sees the same post, well, it's okay. Um, it's better than nothing, but if you can share different things on those different platforms, that's even better. So, but at least share something. <laughs> <laughs> and Milana, you, um, I'll we'll see your note about touching and keeping a personal and business separate. And, and it really depends on, on you because you can, I like, I, I'm, I work for the Urban League, guys. So if you, if you scroll through my, and my Facebook is pretty public. So if you scroll through it, you probably are going to see the stuff because I honestly don't even have time to promote nothing personally at this point. But when I do, I know how to use my filters so that, when if I have something that's just for my family, I have a filter that just shows just for my family and they will see it as well as I know how to pull my filters to so so to, so that on my timeline, I can see just the things from my family. I can also see things on my timeline that's just for the area that I live in. So take some time to educate yourself on how to use those filters. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> so even in on my personal Facebook page, I can still share information about the organization that I work for. I can still share personal information and I can still share information for my businesses that I own, but I know how to do it tastefully and use my filters accordingly. So take some time, but if you are not good with separating that, then maybe you should consider having a personal page and a business page so that, you know, your personal opinions don't affect your business. And that's a real thing, Amy, for, you know, the young lady to share her personal views and people retaliate, you know, digital, um, People behind the keyboard and the computer can do some things that can either help you or they can really hurt you. It depends on how you walk that fine line. So you just want to use wisdom, you know, in doing And that. you don't always want to post your grandkids and then have a business post. So it really separating the two is the best. Um, because if you're posting pictures of your grandkids or your kids, they shouldn't be included in, in a business post. So it should, it's easier to separate them. <laughs> guys, thank you guys so much. Again, this whole session has been recorded. So you can go back and um, Amy has some resources. Let me pull it. Thank um, you. Yeah, deal with that link. Sorry guys. Here it is. I'm going to put it in the comments and then of course I'm going to do another drawing. So I will be sharing my screen in just a moment. 
So yes, if you follow that link, you'll see the resources that Amy put in that folder for you. Um, let me make sure I have my drawing together. It's public. <laughs> All right, there we go. And I'm going to share my screen so we can see who is the winner for today's gift card for this session. Yes. <laughs> All right. Congratulations, Janice. I will be in touch with you um, on how to receive um, your gift card. So, if no other questions, Amy, thank you so much. Thanks. This was very, very helpful. Very helpful, and the information was really good. I hope you guys took some good notes, and I hope that you're able to apply some of the things that you've learned. I know I learned some some tricks because I really, really like that check-in feature. I mean, you know about check-in, but use it for a different advantage, you right. know, to kind of help promote your business. I think that's really, really good. Right. right. We think about it when we go there as a consumer, but we don't think about it, how important it is from a business perspective. Yeah. Yep. Yes. So even those who are doing virtual, you know, um, uh, on a virtual platform, you may be selling jewelry. So if somebody purchased jewelry from you, have them to check in that they made that purchase mm -hmm. and maybe they may get something free. Maybe you throw on a pair of earrings or something or they get a shout out or maybe they go in for a random drawing, you know, at the end of the week, you know, for those who check in. So I think that's just a really good way. And like you said, people like to be recognized. You know, they like mm -hmm. to be acknowledged. I spend my money with you. Say hello to me. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yes. I think those are all good tips. So thank you guys so much for joining us. We have one more session today, and that is getting certified. It starts at 3 o'clock. So if you are on that, uh, if you register, I'll see you back at 3. Uh, if not, thank you so much, Amy. This recording will be available a little bit later, and we'll send out the link for you guys to go back and check this out to digest the information that you got on today. Thank you all.